So I wanted to talk a little bit about my own chart and some of the changes that have gone on that maybe got me to India and caused me to move here because it's been such a big uh, life-changing event for me um, and a very fulfilling event for me. And so, uh, yeah, it must be showing up in my chart, right? So I talked about how um, the Saturn moon dasha switched over right when I was on the plane. Um, here you can see Saturn moon changed over 19th January as I was flying for two days, you know, and uh, before that, my Saturn sun dasha was a very stressful time for me. It was one of the tougher years of my life. Um, really before that, I hadn't had a tough year since like 2017. Saturn Venus dasha had been just carrying me through, you know, and it was just a really good time learning, learned so much, healed so much, grew so much in those years. Um, and they're in like auspicious combinations. Venus is in the second from Saturn. That's good. Saturn sun. Well, they were in good combinations, but Saturn is just agitating the crap out of my sun to 59 out of 60 Virupas, as you can see here, Saturn to sun 59. So that was a pretty tough year for me. And when you have Saturn aspecting your sun really strongly like that, you get a lot of, there's literally just negative forces in your environment. There are literally just forces in your environment that do not want your highest good, that do not want you to shine your light. And uh, yeah, in the course of that last year, like, yeah, I, I was, I fell in love with a girl and then she basically thought I was cheating on her and just basically like dumped me and broke out with me without ever even really like giving me a chance kind of. And uh, that really like hurt. And then I had uh, every other like girl I seemed to go on a date with or whatever. It would just be the most painfully like horrible dates or experiences, like the type of stuff you see in movies, you know, like in comedies to try to, try to describe um, or to convey like the worst possible date. I felt like I was experiencing those things. Um, and previously, like it wasn't, you know, those things didn't happen as much in previous years. And then um, just like monetarily wise, I had like a lot more surprise expenses, a bunch of things break down, you know, at the very end of the year, my car broke down and died on me. So I actually still technically don't even have a car because I've just been in India since that time. Um, but yeah, just a number. Oh, and just the economy got so terrible that I could hardly afford to eat a lot of the food that I, you know, normally would eat as a vegetarian and stuff. And in the Bible Belt in South Carolina, it's very hard to eat even beans and rice or something without paying like ten dollars and uh yeah so i'm not going to go on and on and complain you know it was just it was just tough here saturn moon it's ever since then it's been great saturn venus it was also great these are both benefic planets saturn venus like i said venus is delighted by saturn in the 11th house in my chart these were great those were great years for gains for me so i'm not like trying to complain like my life's been bad or anything it hasn't saturn moon is uh moon is in the eighth from saturn so that's not as auspicious as a dasha play out it's true and the moon does starve my saturn um, moon hits my saturn at 33 out of 60 points so yeah occasionally i will uh you know feel uh like i guess just feel depressed or lower energy and you know the, the glass is more half empty when you have the moon starving saturn you tend to focus on the negative because the moon is the mind and saturn is the negative but at the same time this moon is in waxing it's uh almost full it's a benefic. It's a great benefic in that way. It's a benef really benefic planet for uh, Pisces rising because it rules the fifth house of good past life karma, Porva Punya. And so everyone would agree that my past life karma, whatever good stuff I have, probably has to do with India and yoga and all the stuff I learned very on, right? So, of course, it's just hilarious that the moon dasha dropped me there before it, you know, like the first place I stepped foot on the ground as my Saturn moon dasha started was India. And it's in Cancer, the sign of foreign lands, the sign of dwelling abroad, dwelling at a distant place, according to Jaimini. Isn't that fascinating, you know? Um, and, uh, and also it's neat because there was a big Mercury retrograde in my 11th and Mercury rules the fourth and seventh. Um, those are big planet, those are big houses for travel, for your environment, and then the seventh is distant lands and all. So anyways, Saturn moon worked out really nicely. But then also another really thing is that since I've been, another interesting is that since I've been here on my birthday, I decided to cancel my flight and just stay here longer. And of course I'll eventually have to go back, but that was kind of a big decision. I just, I had to fly back in a, like in, on the 10th, the night of the 10th and I just canceled it. And I just stayed and I've been staying since. And 
on that day of it's very interesting because I had a Scorpio Charanavamsha change over. Now the Charanavamsha is a Rashi Dasha. It's a sign-based Dasha, and this is coming from the Jaimini system, which is entirely sign-based. And the Vimshatari system is part of the Parashara system. And these aren't conflictual, they're just used for different things. So Parashara is more of a moon-based, nakshatra-based subjective uh, system that tells you how you're feeling and all and your emotions and stuff like that, like the moon. Um, but what actually predicts like very concretely is the Jaimini system because it deals with the signs, which are deal with concrete objective realities because the signs are connected to the sun because the zodiac is the sun signs. Remember, the sun's the one who creates those 12 signs for the 12 months of the year. And this is the funny thing is that Jaimini really doesn't work well without tropical zodiac because, again, uh, you know, the sun, the, the tropical zodiac is entirely based just on the sun and earth's seasonal relationships and has nothing to do with the constellations which are really far away and many of them have already burned out since vedic times or shifted or due to red shift or blue shift or all these things it's just really not a, a wise thing to try to anchor your entire zodiac to a single star or to a, you know different stars since they're all fluctuating and moving and we know this with astronomy everyone knows that so the sign is really interesting. Jaimini, if you want to learn Jaimini, you know, you have to learn it from Ernst Wilhelm or Kay and Rao, basically. They're the real ones that did it right. Um, Ernst did it definitely the best for our yuga and generation so far, but a lot of people aren't open to it because he uses tropical. Um, but once you start taking those, uh, learning that style, you won't go back, trust me. Um, so using those techniques that I learned from him, and then also, you know, I will teach these eventually when I get time, but they, I haven't actually taught these in my course yet because we just haven't gotten that far yet in my Jyotish course, but, or my Jyotish school. Um, but yeah, so using this, basically each sign rises at, and, you know, plays out its karma at different times. And this is just one of the important Rashi Dashas. There's actually a bunch more. There's all these other ones, these 12. Um, but Char Navamsha is the most important. Char is changing, Navamsha is, the, the outcome of your path, you know, Navamsha is the number nine, the final number, the outcome, what you anchor to in the end. And so uh, really interesting how, like, uh, see, I was in this nice cancer, Charna Navamsha Dasha most of my life, you know, and then in Leo, and then I was in Virgo, and then in Libra. It's funny, because Libra is what got me into the financial astrology. Libra is the sign of the markets, trading, it's in the eighth house, the house of other people's resources, other people's money, the market's money, etc. And it holds K2, the plan of astrology, and also past life karma. And I, I do think that I had a past life karma with trading and investing because just because when I was younger and I, I was in this uh, like gifted and talented program at, at the elementary school that I went to, and they mentioned that you would have a uh, they, you know, they taught us all about stocks and trading. And even, even early then I like did, did better than most kids about learning and the stuff and remembering it and just always had this feeling like, yeah, I would be good at that. And so that was when I first took the risk of investing in uh, Bitcoin, you know, and doing stuff like that. And I did it at a really good time um, because 2020 was when the markets crashed, you know? And so I bought in so early that even if it went way back down, I'd still be up or it'd take a, it would take a lot for it to, for me to actually be down. So, but then, you know, now I'm in Scorpio Dasha. Isn't that fascinating? Because I'm in India and this is not like, you know, I still do the financial astrology for clients. I just did a great one for someone uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, so I don't want you guys to think that I'm not doing that because I am, but my heart is in the, you know, the ninth house Scorpio astrology and occult and, you know, Kriya yoga and all that mysticism. Um, yeah, Mayor Baba and all this stuff. And that's really just, you know, the ninth house Scorpio, definitely with Venus, Rashi aspecting, Moon, Rashi aspecting, Mars and Rahu, Rashi aspecting. Yeah, the when you have Venus and Mars aspecting something, it's a lot more, you have the drive and the hunger for it with Mars, but also the fulfillment with Venus. And then Rahu, though, Rahu will give troubles, confusion, stress, and uh, like even toxins, and deal, but it deals with foreign things as well. Isn't that fascinating? Because I'm in a foreign land. And I have dealt with, you know, like a lot more pollution and stress from just uh, various factors, you know, that I'm not familiar, comfortable, or adapted to here in India, you know, from when I grew up. Where I grew up is actually not polluted at all. 
Um, and uh, then the moon Rashi aspect and giving just happiness, you could say, and a lot of emotional fulfillment. Um, and it's an ardor and that's the teardrop. And there's been so many times that I've just cried like tears of joy that I've been, well, I've been in India. It's been crazy. Um, yeah. So I just figured I would share some of that. That's the Charnavamsha. You can go and look at, you know, all these other dashas. There's just such an intricate uh, whole whole way of like reading this stuff um, that, you know, I, I guess I don't have time to go into here. Um, this video, but I just wanted to show like, this is kind of cool because my chart really does show a lot of good things changing over right around, you know, 2023 when this started January and then February. And it showed how, how difficult it was in, uh, you know, 2022. But yeah, there's also a lot more, um, you know, I could say about the, like the, um, you know, the dashes and all, but this is probably enough, enough for now, I suppose. Um, yeah, if you are interested in learning this more technical aspect of astrology, I do encourage you to uh, take my, you know, sign up for my Jyotish school. I've got a Nakshatra course and just a course on Jyotish reading charts just like this, as well as the yogic philosophy, so that you get more of a well-rounded uh, understanding. All right. Thanks, you guys. Take care.